Well, there are a couple of applique fonts in the software that you can use that are already digitized for applique. Sometimes you want to use a different font. Now, obviously not all fonts are suitable for applique, but what I'd like to show you today is a quick way to convert another font to an applique. So the first thing you need to do, you need to be able to access your object properties dialog over here, or Docker, I should say, over here. So if, if it's not in the Dockers down here, there'll be a plus sign at the bottom. Just click on that. All the available Dockers will be here, and the object properties one is at the top. Just left click there to put a check mark, and your object properties will appear here. Um, you should be able to send it over to the Dockers when you're finished with it or just open a different docker okay so at the moment there's no properties for lettering because we haven't got any lettering on the screen but your lettering tool is over here so when you click on that you get the object properties for lettering because you've got the lettering tool now up here is the default font Arial 12 point now 12 points very small you will want to go to a much bigger point um, I think 72 is about an inch high but you can set the height yourself but let's start at 150 points ah now when you adjust anything in this top menu it will change the document defaults that's for this document only so everything you type after that will be in that size font so if you don't want to do that, if you want to be able to still type other sizes into the document, you will have to change them individually one at a time, or you can cancel that. Stay at the 12 point and adjust it after you've typed it, and that way your default will remain the same. So I'm just going to left click here and type in the word applique. Now I've got my cap locks on. Okay, now that is still in lettering mode. Whenever It looks like it's selected, but you are in lettering mode. You can tell by your cursor. It's got an A on it, and the um, cursor will be here where you can backspace and edit. So what we need to do now is size this to approximately the size we want. And up here you can actually type in a size as well instead of using the points system 72 points is about an inch but you might want to actually put in millimeters so if you lock your lock you can set the height here and that will automatically um, adjust the whole lot proportionally scaling it at the same time so I'm going to put 40 millimeters which is four centimeters high and enter and there we are we're right really big now I'm going to zoom out so you can see in relation to the A4 page how big this is now this fonts fairly skinny it's the Arial font and so it's not really suitable for applique as I said before you need to consider your fonts so over here in the object properties it's probably best to work over here from now on in this um, dialogue you can change the font so from the Arial drop down menu um, here at the top the character you can choose any font you like so there is an aerial rounded MT um, in my soft in my computer the fonts that show here are any fonts that came with the software plus any fonts that you have loaded or sorry installed on your computer so if there's a particular font you want just install it on your computer and it will show up here so nothing happened why was that because I'm still in lettering mode as I said with my cursor um, showing the A so what I need to do is go to the pick tool or the select arrow and now change the font to Arial rounded MT and you'll actually see it change on the screen and left click okay now I've got 40 odd millimeters I'm zoomed out but this is quite large now we need to imagine what this is going to look like when it has satin stitch around the outside and the easiest way to do that is over here in the object properties there is an outline option here and it defaults to none but we can drop the menu down now 
I wouldn't applique any narrower than a 3 millimeter satin stitch so I'm going to select that the default is black so we can change the color so you can really see it clearly you can do that in this drop down color picker tool or if I click off close that we can right click on a color in the color palette and that will do it as well so now we've got red showing here we've got a red outline let's zoom in and have a look okay so you might find that that increases the height a little bit because um, the outline straddles the edge of the, the lettering in other words half of the outline is on the inside of the lettering and half of the outline is on the outside of the the lettering objects that means that if you've got very skinny parts in your lettering they're going to be very small um, and that's where why I said you need to consider the font but rather than play around with different fonts at the moment I'm just going to go through the whole process so that you can see how to do it and then you can play with your different fonts okay so I think that that's going to give a reasonable result um, it is a bit thin here to, of you know the black there's not going to be much fabric showing there but um, it's up to you if you're happy with the amount of fabric showing compared to the amount of satin stitching all right so now we know what it's going to look like if we decide that we're happy with that then the process I do is to put this back to none for the outline because I want to get um, this digitize without having to click all the way around it and the best way to do that is to convert it to a bitmap first so with your pick tool make sure it's selected and go to bitmaps and convert to bitmap and the reason I'm doing that and just oh sorry in here put 300 dpi color mode I change that to RGB and I deselect the anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing adds um, coloured pixels around the edges where two colours meet and to soften the um, transition between the two colours and that's not desirable for digitising so I always deselect anti-aliasing. Okay, so now I've got a bitmap and the reason I did that was that I want to use the auto-digitising tools in embroidery canvas if I was to convert this lettering even though I've converted it to a bitmap it will break up the lettering into for instance the A will have um, at least the crossbar of the A will be separate to the um, the two parts the the pointy bit of the A and same with the E your your crossbar bars will be separate from the vertical bar and so you'll get an outline around each crossbar as well and we don't want that so we're actually going to treat this just as a graphic now and unfortunately the software even if you convert it to a bitmap still treats it as lettering so rather than converting we're going to you just go straight through to embroidery canvas and use the um, auto digitizing tools so I can't see my bitmap but I know it's there because it's over here in the color film indicated by this little sailing boat so I need to go, come up here and show my bitmap and I seem to have had it dimmed so I'll undim it as well that must have been the last thing I did all right so here's my bitmap and I've got a white background that doesn't matter all right so we're going to come to auto digitize and magic wand and come over and when you come across the screen you'll get that little red circle with a slash through it but when you get over the picture that'll disappear so just left click on the picture it'll give you a preview here we've we had a very clean image so we've only got two colors that's all we want there's nothing to do here just go okay now it's ready now we can come over the image again and you'll see that areas that you hover over will be hatched and what you need to do is just hover over the actual letters so that only they are hatched and just um, you'll have step fill highlighted by default if not make sure you select step fill before you start and just come over each letter and left click and you'll see the letters appear in the color film as you do it
Okay, so I've now got the whole word applique digitized, as easy as that. But I don't want a fill stitch. I want an outline stitch to create, turn into an applique. So I need to come up to my select tool to select the whole word applique. And I'm in color blocks mode. That's why the word applique is all together. If I was in individual objects mode, it would look like this. And this would be my image at the top. And these would be my letters. But in color blocks mode, it's a lot quicker. So you can just select the whole word there. And then come down to your um, stitch types and choose your satin outline. Now by default, this, the software does do a 3mm in version 8, but you can right-click on the object properties, bring up the object properties, and you can check the satin width here, and yes, mine's 3mm. You can go wider, depending on your font, the wider you go, and that's why you test it out in the Art Canvas, because if you've got a really um, wide satin stitch, it will cover more of the fabric, of course. Okay. So we've got our outline now. We can now hide our bitmap. We don't need that anymore. So we've got a lovely satin outline. Now, we, while it's still selected, we can go to the digitize and to our advanced applique tool. And we will get hatching in all inside all the satin stitch. We'll go to place fabric and color in patches. And I always just use color. Place color. Let's pick a red and come across now let oh yes we can do it it's good okay so you can see now that i have got a white outline around the area that's going to fill with fabric so i can just left click and i've got my fabric in there and same with the p now you may get some issues i've done a video on the corner issue that causes problems with app um the automatic applique, the advanced applique tool, but this one went really well. So um, I haven't got time to go through all the possible things that can go wrong. Uh, hopefully you choose a good font and you get a good result.